I'm Glenn Vickery and welcome to Kiwi Bushcraft and Survival and uh, today or should I say tonight um, I thought I'd do a quick video on um, hangi barrels and as you can see behind me here um, we've got the hangi barrel uh, going and what I wanted to talk about then was um, basically a little bit of how a little bit about how they work and their versatility um, because they're such a good um, thing for survival okay um, obviously not for carrying out in the bush uh, and things like that uh, you can take it out with you uh, if you've got a campsite and things like that a permanent site um, however you can um, if, if, if society was to crash and burn if there was an issue in society and the power went out and things like that this sort of thing would be um, perfect okay so um, basically I've been using uh, hangi barrels since well going back probably about 20-25 years now um, probably longer um, and um, that was before the multi kai cooker this is the uh, I believe this one's the multi kai cooker um, before these cookers and the UFO is the other one this is the multi kai and the other one is called the UFO or the UFO um, cooker and um, I was using these sort of things before they even um, came out uh, what were we using back in the day we were using uh, the, just the keg just a little keg or uh, all my mates had kegs and um, I had a big 50 litre barrel so if you imagine those big 50 litre uh, barrels that you have either oil or petrol in um, that's what I made my barrel out of and um, basically all I did was had uh, a couple of bars at the bottom uh, probably about if you're looking at the barrel here probably um, the bars were around about here inside the barrel and underneath those bars down in this area was the water okay um, and anyway on the bars here you could um, you could put your food and all that on top of those and baskets okay and then chuck a lid on the top doesn't have to be a flash lid it could just be any kind of lid and throw a big rock on the top okay um, so yeah we, we were using these uh, way back before these things here came out um, and uh, they're really good okay you let's talk about the um, let's talk about the versatility as far as if the power goes out if the power goes out um, you're out with power out of power for um, a number of days or weeks or even months or years um, this is where this sort of thing's going to come in to be able to feed your family okay it's going to allow you yes you could just make a fire and cook your food on a fire um, however that will get quite boring after a while um, with something like this you can um, steam your food okay and um, when you steam your food um, all you're using is just water okay um, the heat source that you use is you can use gas like I am tonight um, you can use a fire um, you could even chuck it on the um, oven if you wanted to um, there's really no limit as long as you get some form of heat to uh, boil your water that will create steam um, it'll create steam um, obviously the heat needs to be sufficient to boil the water Okay, that, that's that's quite important uh, what else the water should be clean okay you should make sure you got clean water I wouldn't use water from the hose okay because when it comes through the hose uh, it'll tank the water okay um, so you want clean water and you also where you put your water in you want that to be clean okay when I um, when I've actually bought this one I only bought this one uh, about three or four weeks ago and uh, I found it in uh, cash converters 
and um, it's like a, a for those that don't know cash converters it's like a second hand shop okay and um, it was all rusted okay when I mean I, and it was badly rusted all the old water and juices from the food had over many occasions of being cooked um, had been building up and building up and building up and it was just disgusting and even though they may have been throwing clean water into the bottom of the into the bottom of the base um, it would have been picking up all the uh, gunk and rust and everything else would have been going into the water and going up and going into their food um, so when I bought it I gave that was the first one of the first things I did I cleaned all that out um, and I had to I had to cut it out, okay, that's how bad it was, I had to chip it out in the end. Um, but, so you want where your water goes clean, it needs to be clean water, uh, clean a clean area for your water, and then clean water, so that when you boil that water, it's going to be clean steam going up and through into your food. Very important. Um... The other thing with these here is uh, they can be used as a smoker as well, okay? Um, by the way, I'm not trying to sell this for Multi-Kai or um, UFO or any other brand of um, thing. I'm just talking about this from a survival perspective uh, to be able to cook for your family uh, in the, in, if the need ever um, came, okay? Um, you can also use these as a smoker. So when you use it as a smoker, where you'd put the water, um, instead of putting water there, you'd just put like um, sawdust, okay, like uh, manuka sawdust, kanuka sawdust. Um, you could use uh, the bark of those same trees. That's what I do sometimes. I'll use the bark instead and just break it up, okay, um, and make it all fibrous as you break the bark up, and it'll do the same thing because wood's wood at the end of the day. All you're trying to do is make it smolder. Okay, you don't always have to go and buy uh, big packets of uh, manuka or kanuka um, sawdust, okay? Uh, you could just use the bark off the tree. And if you're out in the bush or something like that, that that's what you're going to use, okay? You know, I mean, you could be there all day chopping <laughs> it up with your knife if you wish, but why? You just need to smolder the bark, the wood, okay, to get that smoke. That's all you're trying to achieve. Um, and then of course the smoke would go up and um, heat up and heat, cook your food, okay? The heat in the smoke cooks the food and the smoke gives it the flavour, okay? Um, so that's, that's how you get the flavour when you have uh, smoked fish or smoked chicken or whatever. Something like this here you could smoke up heaps. Eel, fish, chicken, um, just, just anything anything smoke it whatever you want and okay um, so going back in the days when I had my big 50 liter barrel it was huge and I, I could fit a lot of food into it um, in the end when I when I left Christchurch I gave that away to a mate um, mate of mine and um, when I moved back up here to Auckland um, I got my brother to make me one one like this actually my brother Rob or we call him Billy he used to make these, okay, um, before Multikai Cooker and UFO were making them. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if they got the idea of him. He was selling them at the uh, Otara Flea Market. And so they probably, they probably seen his one and got the idea from them, from him. Um, but ultimately, I got my brother to make me one. And uh, it was like this, it would have partitions on it. And um, and then I, I left it at my brother's house one night. Uh, oh, I left it at my brother's house, uh, my younger brother's house for a while. I left it there. When I went back to pick it up a number of months later, um, he said it was out in the garage. So I went out to pick it up, grab it, and uh, had lights all over it. He'd, he'd put lights all over it and wheels on it and all this. So I went back inside the house and I says, hey, what have you done to my... Um, Mahangi barrel and he goes oh I've turned it into a robot and I was like hey he goes I've turned it into a robot and I said why and he goes to me um, 
he goes, well, I, I had this idea, I might turn it into a robot, and I could take it down to the um, the shopping malls, and, and, and I could put a microphone uh, speaker in it, and I could talk to the kids and remote control and, and do, like, advertising and things like that. And I was like, but you turned my hangi barrel into a robot. And he goes, yeah, I know, cool, eh? Cool, eh, bro? I says, nah, bro, not cool. All right, so... In the end, I just left that because it had holes in it and he'd put lights in it and all sorts of stuff. And it was just, it was, he'd, he'd munted it pretty much. So anyway, Merv, um, thanks for that, bro. Um, I've been out without a hangi cooker for um, a number of years now. Until I seen this one at um, Cash Converters. And I bought it for, I think it was $300. Yeah, $300. I got it for 300 bucks. And, um, yeah, that was a good score, really. Gave it a good clean up, fixed a few things on it, and um, now we're into it, okay? Um, and this is the first night, actually, that we've um, started cooking in it, and um, so we're hoping it's going to turn out quite nicely. I have a little trick that I use um, for getting the flavour um, in the uh, hangi barrel. <laughs> And um, it's something that I've kept in the family uh, as family knowledge for quite some time. Um, and a lot of people think they know how to uh, get the flavour um, of a hangi in a barrel, but they don't. And um, people have all sorts of ideas and things like that, but... Um, None of them that I've ever heard, they, they don't know how to do it. They don't know how it works. They don't understand it. Um, but the basics is, when you cook in the ground, when you cook a hangi in the ground, the flavour is different. Okay, you'll, you'll cook it in the ground, <laughs> and you pull it out and you eat it, You it, the, the food tastes like hangi. Okay, that's what it's called hangi, but it tastes... Nice. It's got a certain flavour to it. In a barrel, when you just do it in a barrel naturally, if you don't put anything in the barrel, okay, and you just use uh, water and steam it, you will um, just have steamed food, okay? Um, that's all you're going to have. It's just going to be steamed food. You're not going to have the flavour that it gets from the ground. Now, I'm going to I'm going to pass on um, my knowledge uh, to my viewers, uh, mainly my subscribers. Now, um, something that I've, I've I've kept to myself for many years, probably about a good thirty odd years, I've kept to myself, and I'm forty six now. Okay, so probably not. Not since I was probably 16, maybe since I was about 20. So close to 30 years, okay? And I'm going to tell you the secret to um, getting the flavour in the barrel here that you would normally get from the ground. And I'm going to tell you why as well. And uh, this has been a fa uh, family secret of mine for many years. Uh, There's not many people that know this. So anyway, hun, could you grab me another beer, please? So anyway, let, let's um, go. When I do tell you the secret to this, I'm going to tell you how it works as well. Okay, and I'm going to reference it to the uh, traditional hangi. And uh, I just want to say one thing before I do tell you. This is actually very, very difficult for me to tell because it's a... It's been a family kept secret for a number of years. And I figured it out many, many years ago how to get the flavour in a barrel that you have in the ground. And before I actually uh, tell you the secret, I'm going to tell you a little story. My uncle Noel, he, uh, he, loves, he lives up in, um, up north in uh, Opanoni, for those, those that know Opanoni is. Beautiful place up north. And um, he came down to Auckland one time for a celebration that I was having. And uh, 
I was doing up a hangi in, in a hangi barrel that I had and um, in fact it was the hangi barrel that, I, that my brother turned into a robot anyway I, I was doing it out the back of the house I dug a hole chucked the hangi barrel over it I made a fire, lit fire in the hole cooked the hangi did it with my secret uh, secret uh, I don't know if you call it a recipe but my secret uh, my secret and um, he's been doing hangis all his life in the ground anyway I pulled the food out put it on the table he turned up with all the other whanau and he sits down and he's having a feed and then he says to me who cooked this and I says I did uncle and he goes um, he goes it's beautiful it's beautiful he goes where did you cook it and I said, oh, I cooked it out the back of the house. And he goes, oh, oh, okay. Can I come and have a look? And I says, yeah, sure. I cooked it in the barrel, though. And he goes, hey. We got out, got out the back. And he's seen the barrel there, and he goes, um, he goes, so did you cook it somewhere else and then bring it back here and put it in the barrel? And I said, no, no, I cooked it in the barrel. And he goes, no, no, you must have cooked it somewhere else in the ground and brought it back here and put it in the barrel, eh? Mm -hmm. And I says, no, no, I cooked it in the barrel. And he goes, you can't have because it's got the same flavour as being done in the ground. He goes, I've been cooking hangies all my life. He's 65 now. He goes, I've been cooking hangies all my life in the ground and this is done in the ground. And I says, no, it wasn't. It was done in the barrel. And he goes, you can't make the food taste like that in a barrel. It has to be done in the ground. And I said, it can be done in the barrel, and it can taste like it's been done in the ground if you know what you're doing, if you know the secret. And he goes, no, 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 you can't. You can't do it. And, and I said, yes, you can. I said, I figured it out years ago. Anyway, I said, I'll tell you what, Uncle, you're far now, I'll tell you. So I, I told him, and I'm going to tell you now as well. So, I'll just tell you a couple of things that other people use first. Some people use uh, leaves. They'll put leaves and branches in there. Some people will put um, uh, sawdust in there. Um, some people will put um, rocks in there. Um, it's just amazing um, what what people will put in the hangi to try and get that flavour. But I'll tell you, I'll tell you what. The first thing is, let's let's go back to a traditional hangi. I'm going to compare the barrel to a traditional hangi, and as I go through, I'm going to give you the secret. When you start a hangi, you dig a hole in the ground, okay, and we, big hole in the ground. And when you've got that big hole in the ground, you chuck all your, so that hole is soil, okay, all around the outside of the uh, hole. In the hole is nothing. You chuck all your wood in there, lots and lots and lots of wood. You burn the wood, okay, and in that you chuck all your rocks and you, whatever, like your volcanic rocks, you want rocks that aren't going to explode, so you want volcanic rocks. Don't use rocks that you use from a riverbed or something like that because they can explode, okay? And if they sh explode and shatter and go into you, it's dangerous. So use volcanic rocks. They can contain and hold the heat. They won't explode, okay? Or you can use iron bars like um, railway, railway uh, lines and things like that. Don't go cutting up the railway lines, though. But find some decent uh, metal okay um, and use those steel okay and what it wait basically what you're doing is you're heating up this big bonfire all this wood and you're using all that heat to heat up these rocks or uh, metal bars of steel or whatever and those metal bars of steel or rocks whatever you're using are gonna be your heat source okay and what we do is once you've burnt them really really hot they've got to be piping red hot okay if you don't burn them hot enough when you actually put your hangi down and everything else 
those those they haven't those rocks or the metal hasn't got enough heat in it to cook your food. So what you have to do is you have to heat them up to the rock hot, red hot. Okay. Then once that's done, you've got to get all the wood out. Get all the wood that's burnt. Get it all out. Get all the embers out. You don't want all that crap in there. Okay. So you've just got now in the bottom of your hole your rocks or your metal bars that are holding all the heat. Okay. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to start putting in your food in a traditional hang. You're going to put it, put all your food in some baskets, okay, and put the baskets over the top of these uh, rocks. So you've leveled all the rocks on that out, leveled all your bar, metal bars out, and you place your food on top, okay, where obviously it's not going to scorch the food. So you want like leaves or just whatever you can. Um, wet sacks or something to stop um, the food from getting burnt but you put your food down keep putting all your layers of food meat first then veggies because your meat's harder to cook you want it where it's hottest okay and your veggies on the top plonk 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 okay and then of course after that you cover the food on the top and then you cover over all the um, soil over the top of that food that's your traditional hanging with the hangi barrel here, we don't need a big bonfire to heat up. Um, you know you can make it yourself. We don't need a bo big bonfire to heat up rocks or steel. This gas cooker here with the the, 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 the cooker, the heater here, okay, that's my heat source, okay. Um, the heat heat here is going to heat the uh, water, okay, and so. When you've put the food into the hangi, one other thing we've got to do, we spray a bit of water over the food, okay, um, and that, that water over the food drink, drips down to where the, um, the uh, rocks in that are, or the metal bars, okay, and because they're so hot, when the water hits them, they create steam, and psh, the steam comes up, and that hot steam goes up and through the food, cooks it. Same here. The heat source here just heats the, heats the water and the steam goes up through and cooks the food. Okay. Now when you've got something where the, the, the steam goes up and cooks the food and the steam go in the traditional hangi the steam goes up and cooks the food and in a hangi barrel the steam goes up and cooks the food. That's called a steamer. You can use that in your kitchen. Okay. You can get a steamer in your kitchen. It's just a steamer. So what's the difference about in the ground? When it's in the ground, what happens is um, the rocks that are there are not giving flavour to the food. Okay, there's no flavour in rocks. Okay, has anyone chopped up a rock, chop up a rock, put it in a frying pan and cooked it and eaten a rock or heated rocks up with any food in there? frying pan or their, their boil up or whatever to get flavor. No, there's no flavor in rocks. So when ple people, please don't put rocks in a hangi barrel. It's not going to give you flavor. The rocks are simply your heat source once you've heated them up. Okay, obviously with a hangi barrel, we don't need rocks because we're using another heat source. We're using gas or a fireplace or a fire or something. Okay. But we don't need rocks. Don't put rocks in. That's not going to give you flavour. Okay, that's just, um, well, duh. Okay. The next one that people will put in, as I said, is leaves. They'll put in leaves and branches and stuff like that. Okay. Now, if you, when you, in, you look at a traditional hang, okay, you don't put leaves and branches in there to, to give the food flavour. Okay. Um, you use the leaves or branches and wood and whatever else to heat the rocks and the um, the iron bars. That's the only time you have some form of wood in that traditional hangi is to heat up your rocks or your thing. So we don't need those. Um, and then once you've heated those up, any leftover bits of burnt wood and that get taken out of the pit and biffed. Okay, because we don't want burning bits of wood in there. We just want the rocks or the, the really, really hot rocks or the really hot pieces of metal. Okay, so don't, 
don't put pieces of twigs and leaves and stuff like that in there it's not going to give you any flavor the only time you put um, wood in there is if you're making a smoker okay because we need to we need uh, timber okay wood then wood is for smoking and we only use wood in a hangi when we're actually heating up our rocks or our uh, iron bars then we get rid of it we don't need it anymore so that's not going to give you the flavor okay in a traditional hangi we don't create flavor from those sort of things okay so what happens next um, so the next thing that we need to do just hang on a second the next thing we need to do is so where does the flavor come from well what does a traditional hangi have that a barrel doesn't have that's up on the ground here the ground has soil okay it has soil at the bottom of the pit it has soil around the food it has soil on top of the food okay and what actually what's actually happening in a traditional hangi is the steam so you've got your rocks you've got your iron bars you've put the water you've put your food in you've put water on top of the food you've covered over the food with um, sacking and then soil and what happens is the water drips down onto those hot rocks or hot iron bars creates steam and that steam goes up because steam rises and it goes through into the soil okay and it comes out of the soil and it's going into the food and cooking the food and going into the soil and going back into the food and cooking the food and it's rising going into the soil and food cooking the food and it's going into the soil at the uh, right at the top and then it's coming back down as it cools down going back down heats back up on the rocks again comes back up it's going through through all the soil around in the soil around the pit okay and then it's going into the food now so would I just go and grab a bit of soil right now and put it in my mouth and eat it and go, mmm, that's yummy? No, I wouldn't because it would be horrible, okay? However, what is the steam grabbing from the soil? The steam is grabbing all the nutrients from the soil. It's picking the nutrients up in the soil and it's carrying them in the steam up and into the food, okay? What are nutrients? Well, nutrients are what makes in the soil are what makes the grass grow, what makes the trees grow. Okay? Without the grass and without the trees, there'd be no oxygen, we'd all die. Okay? So the nutrients that make this life, this plant life, okay, that's what is getting picked up from the soil and getting taken into the food. And that's where your flavor is coming from. So, now that we know the answer to that, what do we need in a hangi barrel? What's missing in a hangi barrel? Soil. Soil is what's missing in a hangi barrel. Now, people always say you can't make the flavor of a barrel in a barrel the same flavor as in the ground. Well, you can if you bring the ground to the barrel. Okay, because the only thing that a hangi has in the ground that's different to in a barrel is a barrel doesn't have soil. Okay, and it's like, duh. Most people, in fact, I'm the only one that ever figured it out. Um, people will say, uh, people might say after I've done this that, oh, I knew that, but they didn't. Okay, I can tell you that right now because in my, my entire life I've never ever had anybody come up to me and tell me it okay and I've never ever seen anyone doing it except for myself and some people that I've shown in my family and then some of them may have told other people over the years but not many okay so what's happening what do we need to do here we need the heat source okay that's basically down here is our heat source whether it's a fire or gas that's acting as our um, stones our hot stones or our hot iron bars Right, except we don't need to make a big bonfire to do that. We've just got heat. 
okay? We heat the water. The water that's getting heated in a traditional one is we sprinkle the water on the food and it drips down. We don't need to drip it down. We've got it on at the base here. We've got water at the base here. The next layer up needs to be soil. We want a big sandbag of soil. You know, probably about that thick. All right, maybe the thickness of my of a thumb, okay, of soil. And the steam will go up through that soil, and now the soil needs to be clean. Okay, don't get soil from a place where they've used fertilizers for years and years and years, um, and all those sprays and everything that they use, because all those sprays and those chemicals and poisons will be in the soil. Don't use it. Get clean soil from somewhere where it's clean and safe, okay? The backyard of your house, fine. That's where I got the soil today. Just the backyard of my house. Just dig down, take out any weeds, take out any rocks and stuff like that, okay? You just want the soil, because that's where all our nutrients are. That's where all the, good, the goodness of the soil is, okay? Just like in food, the food when we eat, normal food, eat a pear or an apple, we eat it. We're gathering all the, taking all the nutrients out and it's going into our blood and feeding our body. It's the nutrients that the body sucks out of that food, okay? Anything else is waste that gets thrown out, okay? So, the, the steam will go up through that first bag of um, soil, okay? Go into our food, okay? Steam will keep rising. Then I'll have another bag of soil at the top, right at the top here, okay? Right at the top. The steam will go through into the top, cool down, where is it, here, go into the top, cool down, drift back, drift back down, heat back up at the heat source here, alright, and then go back up through the soil again, back up through the food, taking all those nutrients into the food, cooking the food at the same time, reaching the top soil, grabbing more nutrients, bringing it back down, okay, as it's cooling down, Still, still cooking in there, okay? Heating back up at the bottom, going back through, and it's constantly circulating. Alright? It's constantly circulating. And that steam is constantly grabbing that, the nutrients out of the soil, going through the soil, grabbing the nutrients, taking it into the food and cooking it. And when I pull this food out, it's going to have that hangy flavour. Okay? Because if I don't have soil in this, barrel, it's just going to be steam cooked food. That's it. Steam cooked food. It'll still be nice. It'll still be cooked. It'll still be yummy. It'll still be uh, hold the, all the nutrients of the, the actual food that the food already had in them. It'll still be lovely to eat. But it won't be hangy. It won't be like it's been cooked in the ground. Okay. So this is just a little bit of a, um, a secret that I've been wondering when I should when I should release this um, information that I've had all my life. And I thought, you know what, you, you can't take this knowledge with you. And it's one bit of knowledge that I've kept for a long, long, long time that I've only shared with some very, very close people. Um, and I thought that it was about time to share it uh, to my subscribers and viewers. And also um, hoping that it will now start to spread out throughout uh, New Zealand the Pacific and maybe the rest of the world to help others um, to learn how to enjoy their um, uh, cooking in this in this way better and hopefully allowing more people once they try this out that they um, remember to put your soil in a sandbag eh? put it in a sandbag don't don't just put it in a something where the soil is going to drip out. Make sure it's in a sandbag so it's nice and contained and the sandbag should fully cover, preferably fully cover that that barrel so that the, the steam has to go through it. Okay, with this particular one I can't actually do that on the bottom one, it fits into the tray. Um, but hey, it's, it's better than nothing to have soil in there. The more soil the better. Okay, the more soil, the more nutrients, the better. Okay, um, but anyway, I'm hoping that this will help a lot of people out, and people will be able to enjoy their hangi barrel a lot better, and um, and obviously the people they're cooking for will enjoy it a lot more as well. Anyway, ultimately these are 
a prized possession that will last a lifetime that are great for any survival situation okay because when the power goes out if the power goes out and it does on occasion whether it's a, a massive power out countrywide or worldwide the fact of the matter is is that you're not going to have your oven going okay you can't have your oven you've got no microwave anything of electricity you can't turn it on so you need something yes you might have a barbecue brilliant okay but something like this gives you more variety to be able to cook with okay um, the versatility with this where you can take it places take it to the beach and things like that is great as well anyway um, the main thing for this video was um, I was just going to like show you the fact that um, talk about some of the good stuff about having a hangi barrel and um, how great they are for uh, preparedness um, and uh, great for uh, family celebrations and occasions um, but it ended up coming out of me with me telling uh, you guys my secret um, and hopefully a lot of people out there will now see why and how exactly an actual traditional hangi works okay I think Māori back in the day when they started cooking in the ground that's all they had they, they, they weren't cooking in the ground to get that flavour on purpose they may not have even known themselves why the food came out with a particular flavour um, it's a beautiful flavour okay um, they may not have known themselves and I doubt they probably did okay but that is how it works that is how you get the flavour and all you need to do with one of these little beauties is bring the soil to the barrel and you'll get the same flavor as done in the ground because then it's just basically you're using the same techniques as a traditional hangi in the ground okay because the ground only has one extra benefit that this doesn't have and that's the soil okay and the soil again let me just one other thing I've heard in the past some people say put soil put dirt in the water put dirt in the water no, don't put dirt in the water. When you put dirt in the water, all you're creating is mud. <laughs> don't You don't want mud, okay? It's not about having mud. It's about steam going through the soil, okay? Not mud. It's about steam going through the soil, okay? And then coming back through and into the food, okay? Um, because that's the other one. That's the only time I've heard people talking about um, using soil, and they're saying put it in the water, and that will just create mud. Don't do that. You're just gonna you're just gonna pollute your water doing that. That's that's just that's just dumb. Okay. That's just that's that, that, that just doesn't even make any sense. Don't do that. Okay. Put them in a sandbag separate from the water. Okay. And enjoy your multi kai cooker. Enjoy your hangi barrel of, of whatever type style you have. Um, you don't need anything this flash. Uh, I was just lucky to come across it for 300. Um, I built the legs on it this morning. Uh, went out and got some stainless steel legs and some um, rubber feet for it and just plonked them on because it didn't come with any. Um, all you need is a barrel, a barrel and a lid and something to keep uh, the water in the bottom and something to keep the soil off the water, okay, above the water. It's all you need, okay, and then the food goes on top of the soil and soil can go on top of the food. It gives you that added extra nu nutrient at the top as well. Just like a natural hangi, a traditional hangi, you have you'll have soil at the bottom, at the top as well. Well, something like this, if you could actually put soil all around the whole barrel on the inside, car pie, okay? But probably not going to happen, okay? Not in my lifetime anyway, unless somebody uh, makes something to do that. It wouldn't be hard, but I've never ever seen anyone do that. And I'm not going to go to that extent, but it would definitely make... Um, a huge improvement to the flavor as well because again there's more soil more more the steam can get more into the soil to get more nutrients out and your food's going to come out delicious it'll come out delicious like this anyway anyway I'd like to thank you for coming along for those that watch this video um, uh, kudos to you because you've learned learned a, uh, a secret that not many people know and when I mean not many I'm talking about 
maybe 20 odd people in the entire country okay um, so take the knowledge uh, learn from it and um, it's probably one of the best videos as far as knowledge that I can give uh, to anybody and um, if I see you out there on the streets um, say hi come up and say hi okay share like subscribe take care bye bye okay, welcome back to Kiwi bushcraft and survival and I thought I'd just go into a part two here with uh, the hang is uh, done two and a half hours now just over two and a half hours actually and uh, I thought I'd take it off and um, show you the uh, setup so uh, I'm just going to turn the uh, gas off from over here and over here and then turn it off at the bottle as well as a backup okay and so this is the beautiful part I'm just going to take the whole um, top three layers straight off so that you can see the um, setup that I've got hopefully it doesn't fall on me okay so there's the straight setup okay so what I've got here is uh, on the top I'm just going to turn my camera so I can see okay so what I've got on the uh, on the bottom here is the waters in here okay here's our heat source here's our water in here okay and then over here on the first uh, layer I've got a sandbag full of uh, soil and then we've got our meat sauce meat sauce with some veggies veggies in here um, mutton cloth okay and then we've got another bag of uh, soil on the top here okay and under this bag of soil I've got about three or four extra layers of bags of soil uh, correction um, hessian or sandbag just to stop the soil from going in so the steam was going through this one up into the meat so going, the steam was going through this soil up into the meat up into this soil coming back down and constantly flowing to get that flavor in there okay and you can smell it's beautiful now the be good thing here is I'm going to take this off and then um, at the end of the day if this wasn't cooked I could just chuck it straight back on and carry on cooking but it is cooked okay well it should be first time I've done it in this particular barrel but I guarantee it'll be cooked. Normally take an hour and a half, two hours. Two hours good. I've gone for two and a half, should be safe. Okay, because I had a bit of frozen chicken. So anyway, I just thought I'd quickly show you that. Now I've got to take this in for the whānau. And um, I hope you like the setup. Uh, one time I'll probably do a full setup of how to do the preparation and everything else uh, for those that uh, are keen on it. Anyway, thanks for coming along. Kiwi Bushcraft and Survival. Take care. Adios amigos.